I saw that the Gorefield mod was recently updated, and I think this is a good time to do a deep dive into the lore of Gorefield, which is surprisingly deeper than you would expect. We all know that Gorefield is basically a horror version of Garfield, the lazy, greedy, orange cat that was created by Jim Davis. And back in the day, Garfield was just a comic strip, but later turns into a cartoon TV show and even got his own movie back in 2004 with Bill Murray actually voicing Garfield. Now with that kind of popularity, it should be no surprise that Gorefield also got a lot of attention, showing up in multiple creepypasta stories, FNF mods, artworks, and animations. And I feel like I have to mention the GOAT William Burke because their artwork is basically what exploded Gorefield into the mainstream and that leads us to talking to a youtuber named lumpy touch who also did a great deal of gorefield animations and helped us understand the lore of gorefield now for those of you that don't know the backstory of gorefield starts out with garfield being invaded by some type of parasect that basically took over his mind and turned him into a shape-shifting monster and when we look at the animation by lumpy touch called garfield's game boy complete we can see the story of his murder spree kind of play out the first victim of Gorefield is Odie, which probably surprised no one. Even before Garfield was evil, he used to torment that dog all the time. And after the attack of Odie, John seemed to be aware of the fact that Gorefield had become some type of monster and he attempted to hide away from him behind the couch. And what's creepy here is that Gorefield can actually be seen stalking around the house telling John that he can smell him, making it clear that hiding would not be enough for John to survive this ordeal. And something else that's scary about Garfield originally being a cat is that cats actually do have a great sense of smell and are natural hunters who are equipped to take down prey. So in this state, Garfield is basically like a large mutated tiger. Now, lucky for John, Gorefield wasn't looking to eat him, but rather he just wanted some lasagna, which is obviously a part of his former self coming through. This gives John time to speak with Liz, who tells him that if he finds some type of hidden bone, he may still be able to save Odie, who isn't dead yet, but instead looks like something out of The Last of Us. But saving Odie was really just a pipe dream because soon after that conversation, Liz is hunted down by Gorefield and we assume she is killed by him. I assume that part of the reason that he ends up killing her is because for one, she's a veterinarian, so she may be able to use some type of knowledge to cure Garfield, and two, Garfield wants John all to himself, which is a really common theme in a lot of Garfield creepypasta stories. Garfield goes out of his way to make sure that John has no relationships outside of his, like some weird obsessive feline boyfriend, basically. Now, as John is sneaking around the house, we learn that Normal is a secret agent from the government and tells John to get a blood sample from Gorefield or else there'll be consequences. And don't ask me why the government left such an important job to a cartoonist. And just in case I wasn't clear there, John makes cartoons for a living and the government told him to handle a giant mutated cat monster. In the next part of the story, John decides to stop running and chooses violence instead, grabbing his father's old shotgun. When he sees Gorefield walking towards him, he takes a shot at him, hitting him right in the eye at near point blank range. And anyone that knows anything about guns knows that point blank range from a shotgun should be a wrap for just about anything. And even though Gorefield does end up losing his eye, he pretty much eats that shot and then he tells John that bullets don't work. And if that wasn't bad enough, Normal then decides to change the deal he had previously made with John, saying that now John needs to go save Arlene from the basement. And for those of you that don't know, Arlene is basically like Garfield's girlfriend. At this point, I'm convinced that Normal is an op because there's no way that logical people would send John in again after seeing that bullets don't even work against this thing. But having no choice, John heads to the basement looking scared as heck. And after witnessing this next scene, it makes sense. We are greeted with an image of Gorefield that is like a giant cat that has completely surrounded poor Arlene. And before Gorefield strikes her down, he tells her that he never loved her. And yes, I understand that these are cats, but that is still super sad. I wouldn't wish those last words on anyone, real or imagined. Now, once John realized that there was no way to save Arlene or really fight against Gorefield at all, he started to pour gas all over the basement, deciding it would be easier to just burn it all to the ground. Unfortunately, Gorefield finds John before he can finish, and when John tries to use his lighter, Gorefield bites off his hand. But even missing a hand, and John is able to retrieve his lighter and basically blow up his house and Gorefield with it. And to my surprise, John actually survives the explosion, coming out looking like crap, but very much alive. And when it seemed like this nightmare might actually be over, we see Gorefield also rises from the rubble. And now he is this giant cat monstrosity, seeming to be at least as large as a house. But that is the least of John's worries as he hears sirens in the distance, as Gorefield informs him that the world is coming to an end. And as a bomb drops, Gorefield takes John and stuffs him into his chest, saying that John completes him. 
before growing wings and flying off into this new apocalyptic world. Now, many people were not happy with the ending because it's so dark, but Lumpy Touch has confirmed that this is the canon ending and there will not be an alternate one. But even though this ending was a bit sad for John in this creepypasta title, I'm sorry, John. John does end up sacrificing Garfield because he's such a pain in the butt and also for like this pursuit of knowledge. So in other stories, John does actually get his revenge in a way. Now that we have a pretty good understanding of Garfield, let's go a step deeper and examine the Garfield horoscope series, which is also created by Lumpy Touch. In this series, there are different versions of Garfield for each Godiat sign and your birthday decides which version of Garfield is gonna be hunting you. Now, just to clarify, in the lore, you are technically John and each Zodiac sign is basically like a separate universe where John is being hunted down. But since the player, AKA you are John, I will be speaking as if you are being hunted down for the remainder of this video. Make sure to leave in the comments what Gorefield is hunting you and if you think you'd actually be able to get away from him or just put a skull if you think that you end up being caught. Now, the first version of Gorefield is going to be Aries and this Gorefield will be hunting people whose birthdays fall between March 21st and April 19th. He's basically a fallen angel that's lost eight of his nine lives and he eats people's dreams in order to survive. So in a way he's very similar to old school Pokemon like Gengar and Hypno. The bad part for you is that once he tasted your dreams he became addicted to them and now he's coming back for more. But you know that as he eats your dreams he also takes your life force meaning that he can literally kill you in your sleep and the closer Ares gets to you the sleepier you get. Next we have Taurus Gorefield which will be hunting people with birthdays between April 20th and May 20th which means that this is a guy that would technically be hunting me. This version of Gorefield is an ancient elder god that literally comes from the deepest parts of space. Luckily, all Taurus wants for you is knowledge and not your life necessarily. The only downside here is that any knowledge that you give him will be lost forever and Taurus doesn't want anything simple, which makes sense considering that he's literally like a genius. And since he is ranked the second most powerful Gorefield, you better give him something good. Put down in the comments what knowledge you'd be willing to sacrifice in order to keep your life, knowing that you could never get it back. Next up, we have Gemini Gorefield and he will be hunting people whose birthdays fall between May 21st and June 20th. And if I'm being honest, he's one of the creepiest ones for me. When this version of Gorfield was a baby in the womb, he had a twin named Raul, and the two of them ended up joining together and created one reptile-like body with three cat heads on it. And while he looks goofy, his ability is really dangerous. He can turn into an exact replica of you, but stronger. His whole goal is to take over your life and trap you somewhere so that he can drive you crazy. This one is actually really similar to like the Mandela effect, which is one of the reasons why it's so creepy to me. Next, we have the Cancer Gorefield, which is hunting people whose birthdays fall between June 21st and July 22nd. Now, Cancer Gorefield is a giant cat slash crab type monster that originally was contained on a hidden island in the middle of nowhere, but he has recently abandoned the island to hunt you down. What makes this Gorefield so dangerous is that he has the power to get into people's minds and make them believe things that are not actually real. His main strategy of attack is to make you think that you're stronger than you actually are and to take that power away from you when you get cocky or overconfident. For example, he can make you believe that you're strong enough to face him in a one-on-one -on -one fight and once you're actually face to face that's when you will come back to your senses and realize that you are basically about to fight a Elden Ring boss which for you would be like fighting a tree sentinel naked at level one. Realistically this guy would probably be one of the hardest ones to get away from because you can't even trust your own thought. Now let's go ahead and take a look at Leo Gorefield. This guy will be hunting you if your birthdays fall between July 23rd and August 22nd. The Leo Gorefield is a seven foot tall lion statue and this lion acts as a guardian for the under world. I imagine he has a job similar to like Cerberus from the Hercules movies or just from Greek mythology in general. Now the trouble for you starts when he learns of your existence because apparently you look just like the person that actually created it before they died. The lion is now hunting you to see if you are as good of a person as their original creator. What's really creepy about Leo is that instead of chasing you down himself, he will use necromancy to rise like a undead servant from the nearest graveyard and send that after you. And to make matters worse, the zombie has all the skills that it had when it was alive. So maybe you'll get lucky and get like some old kind baker grandma, or you might get a straight up marine hunting. And even if he managed to kill this undead servant, the Leo will just send another one after you. If you're a fan of The Walking Dead or just don't mind fighting off zombies every day, this might not be that bad for you. Now, Virgo Gorefield is the next one, and he'll be hunting people whose birthdays fall between August 23rd and September 22nd. Virgo has the saddest backstory, in my opinion. He basically fell in love with a cat that may have been out of his league, and he had his head chopped off for it. Now he has returned as a phantom that only thinks of vengeance and devouring the love of other people. Bad news for you is that he's gonna try to trick you into falling in love with him so that he can break your heart and eat you if you ever actually say the words, I love you. Now you may be wondering how a cat the size of a Ford F-150 will trick you into falling in love with it. 
but Virgo actually has a tongue that can take the form of a person that is extremely attractive in your eyes. And he can make the rest of his body invisible so that you can't actually see him. Virgo is basically like a angler fish. If any of you have seen the Finding Dory movie, you'll probably remember this scene here. Now the only flaw to this illusion is that the person is always going to be taller than you. But if you are a short person who's used to people kind of looking down on them, this may not even seem that odd to you. And I think that's one of the things that makes the Virgo so dangerous. And to be honest, I don't think a lot of Virgos would actually survive unless they're ace, because there's no way that you would just reject the person that you are like super attractive to. But let me know down in the comments if you guys see it differently. Now we're gonna take a look at Libra Gorefield and he's hunting people whose birthdays fall between September 23rd and October 22nd. Libra is basically the greatest creation of like a old inventor and it was supposed to actually help humanity create like a kind of perfect society. But somewhere along the line, Libra realized that a utopia was not possible for humans. Now, even though Libra is the size of a house, he doesn't chase after you like some type of savage. He actually holds court trials for you every month and makes sure that you are in perfect balance. This means that you can't do too many good things or too many bad things. You have to be like in perfect harmony. And honestly, this one seems like one of the easier Gorefields to keep at bay. You basically have to just live your life and not really interact with people too much. It may be a bit lonely at times, but it's a lot better than being hunted down, right? Scorpio Gorefield is next, and he's hunting people whose birthdays fall between October 23rd and November 21st. Now, Scorpio was a secret science experiment gone wrong that ended up creating this weird mix of cat and scorpion. And after it was created, it promptly killed all the scientists that worked on it by filling their minds with images of death. Sadly, for you, the reason it broke out is because it had visions of you and now it's seeking you out so that it can fill your mind with visions of your death. Now what's really scary about Scorpio is that these visions will actually come true and the only way that you can avoid them is if you just avoid the place completely where the vision actually happens. So for example, if you have a vision of yourself eating a McChicken at Mickey D's and then you choke on it and die, you would have to completely avoid McDonald's altogether. It's basically like a less severe final destination. But whenever you change your destiny, Scorpio will come back and try to give you a new vision which honestly sounds really annoying but as long as you actually just avoid the places in your visions you can probably live a pretty normal life i mean minus all the creepy dreams and visions next up we have sagittarius gorefield and he's hunting people whose birthdays fall between november 22nd and december 21st now sagittarius is a creature that you actually created with a wish when you were a child and while sagittarius isn't flat out evil he is a gambling addict but instead of putting up money he likes to gamble with your life he has the ability to shoot magic arrows arrows that can change the luck of whatever they hit. They can make you really lucky or make you really unlucky and you have no way of knowing what effect you'll get. What you do know for sure though is that when you do get the unlucky arrow, Sagittarius likes to play games of chance with you because he knows that the odds are not in your favor and again he's a gambling addict. Now we're going to take a look at Capricorn Gorefield who will be hunting people born between December 22nd and January 19th. Now Capricorn Gorefield seems to be a type of evil spirit that was brought to our dimension by a cult that was trying to commune with a otherworldly creature. And now that Capricorn is in our world, he is hunting you down using TVs and radios in order to show you creepy images that have hidden messages in them. These images cause you to become reckless and eventually lose touch with reality. The worst part about this is that Capricorn seems to serve someone even more powerful than himself. So you may also have a god of the underworld after you as well. This one right here may not be too bad if you can completely avoid TVs and radios, but in reality, that sounds like it will be really hard. Next up, we have Aquarius Gorf Phil who is hunting people who are born between January 20th and February 18th. Aquarius started off as a regular sea creature until he stumbled upon a magic jar that turned it into this elongated cat slash fish creature. Aquarius spent hundreds of years searching for a friend and when he accidentally saved his life one day it decided that you two were going to be best friends now. Aquarius is the size of a regular house cat and is sneaky enough to avoid being seen if it so chooses to and it chooses to spend all its time stalking and talking to you. Aquarius will do anything that you ask it if you give it a small offering of your own blood. And if you refuse to give him any blood, he'll basically make your life a living hell. Now, to be honest, my Aquarius babies may have gotten off easy here. It sounds like you basically get a personal ninja for a bit of blood. Doesn't sound like too bad of a deal to me compared to some of the other Gorefields. Now we have Pisces Gorefield who will hunt people with birthdays between February 19th and March 20th. 
Pisces is scary because he's a old rain god who will literally flood whole cities just to preserve the art at the bottom of the sea. Which really makes sense considering that he's a well-sized sea beast. Now the trouble for you is that Pisces finds you to be absolutely beautiful and he wants to make you a part of his underwater art gallery. And Pisces likes to play a game of cat and mouse with you but he uses rain. Basically he will make it rain near the location that you are and the longer the game goes on the heavier the rain becomes. And at any point if you let yourself get completely completely drenched, you lose the game. Losing means that you will be teleported to a underwater prison, which is a terrible way to die. And I think this is the gore field that scares me the most because while it may not be too hard to avoid rain, the thought of drowning to death is one of my greatest fears. I really feel sorry for all my Pisces babies. Now there is one more Garfield called Afiukis, aka the Emperor. He started out as a little cat named Garf who was just trying to basically get by in the world and stay out of people's way. But one day he went through a transformation that turned him into what looks like a mix between a cat and a snake. But even with the chains, he still kept his gentle nature. But of course, people fear what they don't understand, so they hunted Garf down and tried to take him out. As he was laying on the ground, bleeding out, the earth started to swallow Garf up, causing him to start another transformation. While undergoing this new metamorphosis, Garf sent out little eyeballs to check out the world and decided that humanity needed a redo. So years later, Later, he actually rose up and basically nuked the earth. The animation ends with us seeing that a thousand years have passed and Garth is now truly a god, even taking on this angelic-like appearance, even though we know exactly what he really looks like. We also see at the end that his new name is Godfield. Now, before we move on to the next part of the video, I just want to let you know that all the artists for the different Garfields are down below, so make sure to check them out if you want to see some more cool artwork. Now I want to talk about the SCP-3166 Garfield, and honestly this one is more funny than scary, but I still want to talk about him because he's a part of the Garfield lore overall. Basically this version of Garfield is about 7 feet tall, and he only manifests whenever the Garfield franchise starts to struggle or flops in some way. He almost looks like a man in a mascot suit, but when people actually go and touch him, they can see that the suit is made out of real fur, and if you dig deeper, you'll see that the insides are made out of straight up lasagna. Garfield only pop up near people who actually worked on a Garfield project, one of the most notable being when he tried to attack Bill Murray. But he'll also go after anyone who publicly criticizes Garfield or people who are just being jerks to the franchise in general. Now, funny enough, when Garfield actually catches people, he attacks them with punches and kicks and basically any objects that he can get his hands on nearby. And once the person is kind of weak, he basically tears open a piece of his body and forces lasagna out of himself into that person's mouth. And the creepiest part is that while he's stuffing this lasagna into you, he'll be purring and making all type of cat sounds. One of the only ways that you can get away from Gorfield is to have lasagna laid out and ready for him to eat. Any lasagna that is not already a part of his body is like catnip for him and he'll go after it immediately. And realistically, if you can avoid that initial encounter with Gorfield, the Foundation agents will probably catch him before he can strike again. If you enjoyed this deep dive, make sure to check out this video on the screen here. Subscribe today to become a member of the Horse Force and we'll see you next time with another video. Peace, peace.